he was very much involved in all kinds of discussions and negotiations and campaigns uh, for greater peace and indeed for um, the world uh, abandoning nuclear weapons, which was a surprise to me. But the other thing that surprised me, <clears throat> and I'm all right, I, I'm talking now probably about 10 years ago, maybe a little more, um, being told that at that time um, he had regular meetings with Vladimir Putin. I can't remember whether it was sort of like every six months or every year that he actually went across to, to Russia and spent considerable time with Putin at Putin's own request. So he retained access and influence to an extraordinary degree um, throughout his life. We've had so many different perspectives uh, over the course of the morning. You know, on one side, a man who argued for peace, mm. but on the other, a man accused of, of warmongering. Where do you sort of place him along that spectrum? Well, there isn't any doubt that he seemed to have had involvement in a lot of very unpleasant uh, episodes that people would regret, whether it's Chile or Vietnam, or all sorts of places, but um, Cambodia and so on. But um, I think the two things that, that most surprised me about him of recent years is, first of all, he was very much involved in all kinds of discussions and negotiations and campaigns uh, for greater peace and indeed for um, the world uh, abandoning nuclear weapons, which was a surprise to me. But the other thing that surprised me, <clears throat> and I'm all right, I, I'm talking now probably about 10 years ago, maybe a little more, um, being told that at that time um, he had regular meetings with Vladimir Putin. I can't remember whether it was sort of like every six months or every year, that he actually went across to, to Russia and spent considerable time with Putin at Putin's own request. So he retained access and influence to an extraordinary degree um, throughout his life. And then even just in the last 10 years, what do you think he did with that influence? I would guess that he tried to open doors or to keep doors open because that seemed to be uh, a lot of what he did for good or ill during his life. Mm. If we look at his career, it's a, such a short time actually in government, how much do you think the decisions he made then has shaped the world that we inherit today? Well, I, I think a considerable degree because, for example, of... of um, the part he played in opening up relationships between China and the United States. Uh, of course, it's fluctuated wildly since then, but um, to to actually do something as momentous as that or contribute to something as momentous as that, I think is bound to have shaped the world that we live in. Mm, particularly, I guess you'd say then in terms of opening up relations with China um, and then, well, what, what, about the, what about his involvement in, in the Middle East, that kind of uh, tension between Egypt, Syria, Israel on the other? Um, how do you think he tried to shape conflicts like that? I don't have much direct knowledge of his, of his role there. Um, but certainly he's one of the many people who over the years have tried to to break that logjam where uh, either Israel or Palestine at any point seems to think that peace is not in their interests. And often, like at the moment, they both seem to think peace is not in their interests, which is why we continue to have war, conflict and bloodshed, which is very, very disheartening and depressing. Of course, and being, you know, the focus of our agenda today, in the last seven weeks in particular, um, also on the line with us is uh, Lord Owen, David Owen, who is Foreign Secretary under James Callaghan between uh, 1977, just a month after Kissinger left office. Uh, David, thank you so much for your time. What are your sort of your, your, your best memories of working with him, talking with him? Well, he was full of ideas. I think that was the great thing about Kissinger. And he never lost his enthusiasm for ideas. And he was one of the most committed of all the statesmen of that generation to 
endlessly working to try to ensure that there would be no use of nuclear weapons. He believed in a nuclear deterrent, but he was utterly committed to the dangers of nuclear warfare, and he did more than I think anyone else to negotiate uh, agreements, understandings on the non-use of nuclear weapons. And uh, we've grown complacent about nuclear weapons. They are still very, very dangerous. Mm. Um, What's really interesting is, I know you've got a perspective on how he regarded the UK. What did he think about sort of British relations and particularly, um, you know, our role in the world stage changed very dramatically in the last few years? I'm not sure it has changed that dramatically. I mean, people believed uh, some that if we left the European Union, our international influence would lessen. I don't think that has happened. When Kissinger had decided what to do, he was being asked to write in with all the, the, good, the great and the good of America to dissuade us from uh, saying leave in the referendum. He supported that we would leave. And his attitude was summed up to me by, I don't want to live in a world where there's not a British independent view on foreign policy. Mm. He he clearly had some successes, but some real controversies in his uh, career, David. Um, oh, yes, he was a controversial figure. There's no doubt about that. I think he actually quite liked controversy. Oh, why do, great, you, why do you say great, that? Well, he had a great sense of humour. And, uh, uh, of course, at various stages, he was very much the enemy of the left. Mm. And I didn't approve of everything. I remember he objected to by writing a review on his first big book for the Times, direct to the editor. And the editor refused to move. Actually, I gave him his book a very good review, and ever since then, we were even greater friends. <laughs> Do you know what he took issue with? What? Do you know what he took issue with? I, I think that there were, there were, the main issue, I suppose, which I didn't like was his propping up dictatorships in Latin America. That was where I fell out with him. And I didn't also approve of the secret bombing of Laos. But these are all tough decisions and it's easy to, with the benefit of hindsight, rewrite these decisions. The fundamental thing is this man spent hours and hours in search of peace, days, weeks, and he he understood that through dialogue, you could keep the peace. And he did this time after time in the Middle East. Whenever there was a blowing up of the wars between Israel and their neighbors, he was there, even if he was not in government, advising, cajoling, persuading people to adopt the course of peace. 